So I believe grass interrays play a very vital part on runoff, sediment runoff especially off the farms. Uh, once you have the farms properly drained and allow the water to get out of your rows, I think that's half the battle. But I believe the water quality coming out of grass in a rows compared to non-grass in a rows is just no comparison. I think what probably drove me to begin with with grass cover is uh, working on an organic farm, how it can be done. And from there, rolling it out onto conventional bananas. I've always found myself farming on very sensitive areas like riverfront um, farms and things like that. So I felt it had to be done basically. Your biggest asset here is your soil for farming, uh, which is the main reason for looking after our ground cover and our soils. Yep. Yeah, um, to maintain um, healthy plants, vigour, um, and of course not to lose that soil that we need most. Ground covers in banana farms are one of those practices that can improve the physical, chemical and biological properties of the soil. Physically, you can stop erosion and prevent brain drop impacts as well as the soil moving off the farm, as well as improving the, uh, the structure of the soil and improving water infiltration in, into, the, uh, into the soil. Chemically, you, you can increase organic matter, which helps improve the soil structure, but it also helps to retain nutrients as the, the roots of the ground covers explore deep into the soil profile to, to bring back nutrients and it stops phosphorus moving by holding um, soil particles in place. And biologically, the more diverse the ground covers, the more diverse the soil organisms below the, the soil. And this helps with nutrient recycling as well as uh, disease suppression. One of the problems we've seen when establishing ground covers is there can be some competition between, for water and nutrients between the ground cover and the plants, but this can be easily managed through uh, farm management by making sure the water, the plants have sufficient water, but also making sure there is some kind of seeding of um, nutrients to, to compensate for what the ground cover may need. In the long term, this will be re recycling the, uh, the, the nutrients in the ground covers um, so that it becomes less of a, a burden on the plants. So some of the first steps in setting up for grass in a rose in the early stages it would be to um, first make sure that the block is actually properly drained. That allows no water to be sitting in the inner rows. And um, after that's quite easy, all you do is stop spraying it really. Stop spraying it, let the grass grow. Um, my suggestion would be for the first time you slashed it to um, slash it quite high just to eliminate the weeds. So in the summertime, Roughly each month we'd go through with the slasher, but um, in winter times you, you, you can get out to two to three months. And then allow the grass to actually head up, seed up, before you go in next time. And um, that allows a, a good grass coverage. One of the biggest problems I find trying to maintain the grass cover is, is um, when and when not to go into paddocks, I believe. Um, it's, it's simple to, to get stuck in your own ways and um, go into the paddocks when you really shouldn't be in there. Basically, if it's raining, you just gotta to try to avoid your paddocks at all costs. Unless it's vital to your farming, just stay out. That's the biggest issue, water. Um, we look at a block and we see where the damage in the past has been. And with that, with our operators, um, you know, usually a greater operator, um, he'll manage that, um, the, the, the roadway so we can get that water out in the future so we don't end up with the same problems. To maintain our headlands, um, once we start um, planting up a, a fallow paddock, uh, we start preparing by surrounding that area there with gravel. Um, so it doesn't get so disturbed. Um, initially, when you've got a plant block, you don't do much travelling on that block and with the initial, once you start getting the rains and so on, it initially starts up the grass and we don't travel on that road area for a while and, and that way there we get a hard base 
and whereas in the past we used to get a lot of ruts especially when cornering around those uh, headlands and used to wreck up the headlands you need the hard bases there for the um, for the headlands also for when you're traveling with fruit so it doesn't damage the fruit um, and we maintain it like that we mow it and then we get a nice gra uh, grass cover that if you have a look around our farm at the moment, we've got a lot of uh, headlands with grasses on it, but they all, they've all had um, gravel-based um, cover on, on them. When we initially planted this farm here, we, we went to centres of 6.5, right, to give that little bit of a spread part. But that was also initially for turnover in, in, the, in the bananas. Um, with the sunlight you get uh, a turnover much better with the bananas but also yes you get the ground cover working with it. That means also you know we're, we're, during the wet season when, when it's raining a lot we, we make our guys uh, go through with the, with the ladders instead of the machines to put up bags. So we minimise traffic flow through our paddocks. Our water, our, our water that runs off this farm has been very clean ever since, the, ever since um, we've started doing the headlands uh, with the grass and also the grass in the rows. The whole farm was originally set up as a pawpaw farm at 5.5 metre centres and um, when we first started growing bananas here, we grew the traditional double row on 5.5 metre centres. And I sort of, uh, through trials and tribulations, I changed it over a number of years to go to single row because the, um, uh, we weren't really getting the results with double row. There's too many plants per acre. And in a uh, single row setup we've got, there's a lot more light penetration down to the bottom. So there's a lot of grass growth. Usually we plant a paddock straight after um, pawpaws, so there's already a fairly established uh, grass cover in the inter row. And we don't plant anything specifically, we just let um, whatever comes up, comes up. It's mostly like cooch and carpet grass and um, there's some weeds as well, but you know, after a period of time with slashing, um, the, the weeds uh, sort of die off and you, you get a good grass cover. Um, with respect to slashing, we just slash whenever someone's got time, so it's not a sp specific thing, but you know, just at the end of the week when someone's got uh, nothing to do, they jump on the slasher. We're on a sort of s gently sloping red soils and um, with a wide roadway, we're able to get a nice V shape, um, like a spoon drain. Each row is like a spoon drain, and um, so it's not very hard on the gear. There's no wheel ruts anywhere on the farm, and um, uh, slashing's pretty simple. We keep all the banana tops and trash on the mound out of the roadway and um, so yeah slashing is pretty easy really. With respect to improving things with the way we grow bananas it's probably with the headlands we, where, the, where it's high traffic we need to, um, I'd like to do more gravel and rock on the headlands because that's where most of our erosion seems to happen. We don't really get erosion within the block, a lot of the erosion is on the headlands where the high traffic is. Ground covers can be promoted through slashing through the interrows by spot spraying or even using um, wick wipers to try and select out the, the high growing species and then try and to, to get the low growing um, ground cover species that run across the, the surface of the soil. There's a couple of ways of trying to encourage that ground cover to, to become well established within the interrows. One is increasing the, uh, the spacing of the rows, so going more wider to about seven metre centres. The other one is using less traffic or, um, or less in invasive types of uh, tyres on, on the soil so that you're trying to protect that, um, that ground cover um, on the soil surface. Ground covers are, are, are something that you see long term medium term and short term changes. So in the short term, we're looking at changes in labile carbon and those more easily changeable fractions within the soil. In the medium term, we're looking at nutrient recycling and starting to get suppression of, of diseases. And in the long term, we're getting very good nutrient recycling, better soil structure, better infiltration of water, and very little movement of soil off the farm. So it takes about two years to establish a good ground cover and create changes biologically in the soil and that's really what we're aiming 
for after two years the system becomes more self-stabilising.